introduction to nanoscience and nanotechnology lecture number 21 so i'm dr parvez ahmed uh, in this lectures uh, we will have a discussions on nanomaterial characterization technique uh, we will start the discussion from the uh, spectroscopy i mean in this lectures uh, we will try to understand the main concept of the spectroscopy and then later on we will proceed to all the specific uh, spectroscopy technique so let's start towards uh, uh, today's lecture that is characterization techniques so uh, basically we have uh, two types of the nanomaterials characterization technique uh, the first is called spectroscopic methods uh, which basically uh, i mean in spectroscopy methods uh, the most popular we have uh, uh, uvs and uh, dls and the second techniques uh, or the second type of the technique that we have is called the imaging methods uh, the most popular of which is uh, tem sam and uh, afm uh, so uh, let us try to understand uh, the main concept of the spectroscopy that what actually mean by spectroscopy i mean spectroscopy is basically uh, the, the technique in which we get the spectrum of a particular uh, material i mean is the process of getting the spectrum of a particular material by utilizing uh, some sort of uh, uh, radiations. So what actually we have in spectroscopy, uh, in a, a spectroscopy we basically have the interaction of radiations uh, with the sample. I mean we have a sample, a particular kind of sample, and in that sample uh, then we, uh, what actually we try to do, uh, we have uh, the interactions uh, of the radiations uh, with that sample and uh, at the end uh, we get uh, the spectrum so from that spectrum uh, we analyze or we study uh, the behavior of the uh, material uh, so uh, what actually we do with the spectroscopy with this uh, with the help of the spectroscopy we uh, i mean it's, uh, the study of the molecule or atomic structure of a substance by observation of its interactions with the electromagnetic uh, radiation i mean that's the thing that actually we do and the uh, spectroscopy I mean uh, uh, what, what actually it mean it mean that uh, we have the observations uh, of a substance uh, I mean through the interactions of the electromagnetic uh, radiations uh, with the molecules or uh, the atomic structures of a material so uh, uh, what in more specific word mean and uh, more specific word it mean that normally we have a molecular or atomic uh, structures so uh, what in spectroscopy actually we do uh, we study the molecular or atomic structure of a substance uh, where interactions of the electromagnetic uh, radiations i mean that is the key concept of the uh, spectroscopy i mean we have the electromagnetic radiations and with the help of those electromagnetic radiations uh, we uh, have we do the interactions uh, with the molecular or atomic uh, structure of a material and from that we get uh, the spectrum by which we uh, study that particular substance so we have two uh, uh, two type uh, i mean uh, uh, two type of the analysis uh, two type of spectroscopy uh, the first one is called uh, quantitatively or uh, quantitative spectroscopy so what actually we have uh, in this kind of the spectroscopy, uh, we are basically trying to determine the amount of the material in a sample. I mean, uh, we have a sample of a particular material. Uh, so, if we want to uh, find out the amount of the material in that substance or that sample, so we call uh, we call that quantitatively. Uh, we call that quantitative uh, spectroscopy. Uh, similarly, we have uh, qualitative uh, spectroscopy or uh, qualitatively. Uh, so what it mean uh, this sort of the spectroscopy is basically done for identifying uh, the chemical structure of a sample I mean uh, with, with this kind of spectroscopy we basically want uh, to find out how pure are uh, that material or that sample uh, could be I mean which we have synthesized which we trying to make it in the uh, lab so uh, quantitatively uh, quantitatively basically means that we want to find out uh, about the amount and qualitatively means uh, we want to know about uh, the purity of the uh, materials so in order to understand uh, uh, more 
uh, in details uh, the main concept of the spectroscopy so for that first of all we need to study uh, the electromagnetic uh, spectrums so most of us are aware uh, of many different ways of transmitting energy uh, and these phenomena come from uh, together in one physical entity uh, that we call uh, electromagnetic uh, spectrums so uh, the difference between these sources of radiation is the amount of the energy uh, they radiate i mean we have different electromagnetic spectrums and the difference between uh, these kind of spectrum is basically the amount of the energy they have i mean we have the electromagnetic spectrum a wide range of electromagnetic spectrum they range from uh, smaller frequency to higher frequency or from shorter wavelength to larger wavelength uh, but, but uh, you know that here we say that uh, the difference uh, between these sources of radiation is the amount of energy uh, they radiate. So on the basic of the amount of energy, uh, the electromagnetic spectrum, not only the electromagnetic spectrum, but also the sources, they are being uh, divided into uh, different categories. So the radiation, uh, uh, the radiation from these and other sources cover uh, range of the energies uh, and here you can see that uh, this is some sort of the electromagnetic spectrum I mean you can easily uh, observe it here and here you see that we have different sort of the electromagnetic radiation we have radio waves uh, microwaves infrared uh, visible ultraviolet x-rays and uh, gamma rays so here you can see that uh, the rays I mean uh, from uh, radio waves to uh, visible so here you can see that uh, if you move from visibles uh, towards uh, the radio waves uh, so what actually we see we see that the wavelength uh, I mean it uh, uh, the wavelength increases while we move from uh, the visible towards the radio waves and here on you can see that uh, if you move from visibles uh, towards the gamma rays so uh, the wavelength become shorter and shorter so then we have energy so here you can see that uh, if you move from visible to uh, radio waves uh, so the energy we have low amount of energy I mean the energy is decreases but if you move from visible towards uh, I mean uh, to the right from visible toward the right uh, so from visible to the gamma rays you can see that the energy increases and we have the maximum energy uh, for the gamma rays uh, then finally we come toward the frequency so if you move from visible towards the radio waves so here you can see that uh, the frequency is uh, is a lower our frequency decreases or while we uh, uh, move about and similarly if we move from visible to uh, gamma rays so the frequency increases so we have the higher frequency for the gamma rays unlike the radio waves for which we have uh, the lowest or the lower uh, frequency radiation is transformed uh, in a wave form uh, so low energy radiation has a long wavelength whereas high energy radiation has a shorter wavelength so radiation energy uh, I mean when, when, when the radiations uh, the, en the energetic radiations when they interact with the molecules of a substance or a structure of a substance so what actually happened so the behaviors of the radiations uh, with the molecule of a substance uh, you can easily find over here in this particular uh, figure uh, that is the strength of the radiations energy uh, will interact with the molecule in the different and different ways I mean if we have radiations uh, I mean a different type of the radiation uh, with respect to energy so they will interact differently uh, with the molecule of the substance so that you can easily analyze here if you have energetic uh, I mean energetic radiations uh, or we can say that we have high energy sources so uh, it will uh, basically uh, break the bonds of the material and you can see it here and a good example uh, of these kind of radiations are uh, x-rays uh, and uh, gamma rays so uh, if we have gamma rays or we have x-rays and we want to have the interaction of these radiations with the structure of the material uh, and if we know that these radiations they are powerful or these radiations they are, are of higher energy 
So the possibility for this radiation is uh, they will uh, break the molecules uh, of a particular uh, substance. But if you have medium uh, source, uh, medium sources, so what actually they will do if you have uh, the radiations uh, with the medium energy, uh, so what actually they will do, they will uh, just only excite uh, the electrons. I mean, the electron will be excited uh, to uh, a higher state from the ground state to uh, the excited uh, state. And a good example of this is UV visible spectroscopy. I mean, in UV visible spectroscopy, uh, the main concept is basically the excitations of the electrons uh, that basically require a medium range of the uh, energy. Uh, then we have low energy sources uh, that produce vibrations and the chemical uh, bond and here you can see that these are most uh, means uh, it basically lies uh, the infrared uh, region in the infrared region we basically have low energy sources and these low energy sources uh, basically it's produced uh, vibrations and the chemical bond so this kind of the spectroscopy we uh, and this form normally we have FTIR or we have uh, Raman spectroscopy uh, because of which we have uh, the molecular vibrations and from these molecular vibrations we actually get the fingerprint of a particular uh, material we can say we can get the identifications of a particular uh, molecules of a material so this is uh, this is basically lying in the infrared regions uh, and finally we have uh, the microwaves uh, so in microwaves uh, we have very low energy sources uh, that produce a rotation of the chemical bond and here you can see that it's basically the rotations of the chemical uh, bond so this uh, i mean here in this electromagnetic spectrum uh, you can see that how uh, i mean uh, with respect to the energy of the electromagnetic radiations uh, we can get different uh, spectrum from the substance of a material i mean if we have high energy sources so high energy sources basically uh, the possibility for high energy sources uh, is that it will break uh, the bonds of the material and that we mentioned uh, that could be the high energy sources could be x-rays or uh, gamma rays and then we mentioned that if we have medium uh, energy sources so medium energy sources basically excite the electron uh, they excite the electron and this is particularly useful in the UV visible spectroscopy. And but if we have low energy sources, so low energy sources uh, produces vibration in the chemical bond. I mean, uh, these kind of low energy sources they are useful uh, in vibration spectroscopy. A good example of vibration spectroscopy is, uh, I mean, FTIR and uh, Raman spectroscopy. And then we have uh, very low energy sources. So very low energy sources. Uh, produces rotations of the chemical bond and the example of the rotation spectroscopy is basically microwave radio waves uh, they, they basically rotate the uh, uh, rotate the uh, uh, the material or the molecule so from that uh, I mean uh, we understand the behavior uh, of the uh, molecules of a particular material so that's all we have for uh, this lecture about the spectroscopy I hope you learn a lot uh, thanks for watching. See you next lecture very soon. Till then, uh, uh, till then, bye bye. But uh, stay tuned with the next lecture. That will be lecture number uh, 22, and in that lecture we will continue with the nanomaterial characterizations technique, uh, and we will have a discussions on UV visible spectroscopy as a part of the spectroscopy uh, spectroscopic method. So stay tuned with us. Till then, bye bye.